Hello YouTube. Before getting into the video, I want to wish everyone a happy new year and also thank you guys for your patience. As you might have noticed, I haven't been posting videos uh, for the past 10 days and it's because I have gotten sick. Actually, I've gotten sick for the first time in 15 years. It also hit me with a lot of fatigue and I had to decide between recording videos or training. And as you might know, I'm a bodybuilder first and a YouTuber second. So I decided to train and focus on recovery. But now I'm back at 100% and I'm back with this program that I promised in my previous video. A previous video that did extremely well. Apparently you guys really liked it, so I'm very glad. For those of you that missed it, it's in the description. It was a video where I discussed hypertrophy and calisthenics and I really gassed up calisthenics as a very good means to develop an aesthetic physique. And at the end of the video, I promised I was going to come up with the perfect hybrid calisthenic program because to me, there really is no reason to just stick to calisthenics. If you can do weights at the same time, you can get the best of both worlds. So that's exactly what I'm going to offer today as a piece of reading per se to apologize for this, these 10 days where I posted absolutely nothing. But we start with this new program for you guys. So as I said, the reason why I want to mix calisthenics and free weights is because one, that's how I train. Because to me as a bodybuilder, there really is no reason to ignore certain strategies. If a method can get you big, you should absolutely be doing it. And calisthenics absolutely do make you big. So the goal should be to take the best out of both words and get rid of the flaws. Some of the flaws that I could mention, for example, for calisthenics is the fact that it's low on isolation. Many of the movements are compound movements by default, which is great because it gives you a ton of work and stimulus at once but also means that if you have a certain muscle group that is going to outgrow the rest of the body, let's say you're very pec dominant and your triceps don't grow as fast, you're going to have a very tough time to isolate your arms using calisthenics. It's possible, but it's always better to use free weights. So what we do instead is compound with calisthenics to get the bulk of the work. And then we use isolation movements with cables and dumbbells to complete the package. Then there's of course the problem of legs training. You can develop your legs with calisthenics only, but they will not be as big and aesthetic as they could be if you use free weights. So, of course, the logical solution would be to do free weights for your legs and to do most of your upper body work with calisthenics. And that's exactly what this program is going to be. Then, for the things that I absolutely want to keep in the program because they are excellent and they come from calisthenics, the supersets is an obvious thing. Most calisthenics athletes superset things. I've rarely seen people at the park doing pull-ups and sitting on their asses. They always do things in between and that's the way to go at this point. If your goal is hypertrophy and size and you're not supersetting, you're just leaving hands on the table. There is no excuse not to superset. But I also understand that some of you have a tough time supersetting at the gym or even at your house, you don't have the equipment. So all of the supersets of this program are going to be what we call bisets. It's only two exercises, never three or four. That way it makes it much easier for you to actually go through the supersets. Then we are also, of course, going to keep the high frequency training of calisthenics. And talking about variations, I also want flexibility in the program. So for certain movements, certain calisthenics movements, I'm including free weights movements so as to make sure that if you decide you have an option, you can modify the program. The program is highly modifiable on purpose. And all of that, of course, is also going to take from calisthenics the ability to develop a super aesthetic upper body. And then whatever we can complete, the small muscles that cannot really be trained with calisthenics, we're going to complete with free weights and we're going to get something quite excellent. You might have noticed in the title that this program is also a featuring with someone that I respect greatly, a channel that I think if you haven't discovered yet, you should really go look it up and subscribe if you like. And I think you will like it if you like this channel. And that is Board Only Man. This is a collaboration with him. We came together and decided that we both love calisthenics. We both see great potential for development in bodybuilding with calisthenics movements. And so we wanted to make something together. 
But we also decided that because we have different approaches to bodybuilding, he's more performance oriented and more pure bodybuilder per se, it would be even greater if we came up with different programs. That way even you guys have access to two different styles of training. But because the point is also to create something similar with the same mindset and the same goal in mind, we have settled together on an exercise selection. So all of the exercises are going to be the exact same. It's just that the volume and intensity is going to be different. And the frequency is also going to be the same. We are both doing four days a week, but the split is going to differ. My split is an upper lower push pull, a free program for you guys to get huge and jacked following an hybrid calisthenic practice. So now that this has been established, let me move on to the program per se and explain to you how you're supposed to run it. So since you train four days a week, I suggest you start with the upper on Monday. You'll see that there is a day of recovery between the upper and the lower because the upper and the lower have the most amount of work. Then for the push and pull, you're supposed to do them back to back. So the standard routine would be Monday upper, Wednesday lower, Friday push, and then Saturday pull. You have your Sunday to recover and you start again with the upper. You'll see that the amount of work I have you do on every single day is aligned with this recovery schedule. So if you want to make modifications in the schedule, you might have to also modify the workload. Now, we start the Monday with a calisthenics movement, of course, for the upper body. That is going to be either a weighted push-up or weighted dip. Both great movements, S-tier movements for the chest, but also the shoulders and the triceps to some extent. This is our big movement for the upper body. And I want to give you the chance to do a ton of volume if you want, because it is easier to recover from weighted calisthenics than it would be from free weights. Weighted dips are a bit of an anomaly when it comes to that. I personally believe that it's easier to recover from weighted push-ups because the range of motion is lesser. That being said, you can absolutely do your weighted push-ups doing a deficit, so on plates, or using rings for more range of motion. I actually encouraged it. But understand that it is up to you. You can even rotate between the three variations if you want it. Weighted push-ups, you do three to six sets, 10 to 15 reps, so very high volume. Weighted dips would be three to four sets, six to 10 reps, so less volume and less overall sets. The difference is, of course, because weighted dips are going to give you more stimulus, more fatigue. I don't want you to do six or seven sets of weighted dips. It would just be a waste of time. It would be junk volume. With weighted push-ups, you can push the bill a bit more. And then the one superset for this movement in particular is going to be the reverse curls. Three to six sets, so it's aligned with what you would do with the calisthenics movement, and eight to 15 reps. So you see that the rep range always aligns with the amount of sets that you can do. Calisthenics, even though it does work the forearm because you're constantly gripping the bar and pulling your body with that grip, doesn't really include enough isolation movements for the forearms in the form of elbow flexion or wrist flexions, so the reverse curls Take care of that. You could really put any amount of forearm isolation movement you want in the place of reverse curls. Then if you wanted, you could also rotate this calisthenics movement for the upper body with a free weight variation like the Larson press or the close grip bench press, in which case you would do three sets of six to 10, four sets of six to 12, it would be up to you. I of course encourage you to do the calisthenics movement because it's an hybrid calisthenics program, but sometimes we want some variations. Sometimes we want to avoid obvious injuries. Sometimes we plateau on a movement and introducing some variety in line of specificity because these are still horizontal presses can be extremely beneficial. After that, we're going to move on to the next set, which is going to be ring rows for four sets or barbell or saw rows for four to eight to 12. So in this case, you understand the assignment. If you do ring rows, it's going to be just body weight. So you can go to failure as many reps as possible every time that you do it. The saw row is going to be a bit more aggressive on the upper back in terms of fatigue. So eight to 12. And if you wanted, you could do just barbell row. So just strict barbell rows off of the floor. Why? Because I understand that some of you guys might want to train the posture chain a bit more on that upper day. So it's up to you. Just keep in mind that the posture chain and the legs do get worked later on in the week. So if you end up just fatiguing yourself on this upper day and then not being able to perform the rest of the week, there is no point. But since you get two days of recovery until the lower day, it's possible that some of you guys might, might actually be able to do that. And then we superset 
these upper back sets and movements with direct bicep work. So easy bar curls, four sets of six to 10, or cable curls, four sets of 10 to 15, up to you. Then after this, we finish up the day with additional pectoral work, so incline cable flies or decline ring push-ups. I've personally fallen in love with the decline ring push-ups as of late. I think that the sensation is tremendous. The work of the shoulder of the upper chest in particular is great. It is a beautiful movement. It's, I even favor them over regular ring push-ups that I love greatly. Four sets of 12 to 15. You could weight them if you want, but at this point, I think you would be so fatigued that it's best to do them with body weight and just master the technique and do it slow and controlled. And then we're going to do easy bar or dumbbell lying triceps extensions. Four sets of 10 to 12. To long have the tricep work, this is one of such movements that I think is essential in an hybrid calisthenic program because the long head of the tricep tends, tends to be neglected and so you can work it with this. So as you see, you get most of your work from these weighted push-ups and the dips. We complete that with a ring row, for example, for the upper back and then we finish up the, the we add the finishing touches and the details with some reverse curls, with some tri triceps extensions for these quote unquote small muscles that we still want to hypertrophy because it makes you look tremendous. Then we move on to the Wednesday that is your first low day. So this is when we have to pay close attention, right? Because this is where a pure calisthenics program would be lacking. What am I going to have you do to complete what calisthenics cannot do? We start with a squat. We start with a heavy knee flexion with weight on your back. So either an heel elevated squat, three to five sets, or hack squats, still three to five sets. The reason why both Omniman and myself have decided on these variations is because we want to have you do a movement that is going to be almost pure quads, while the posterior chain is deloaded for reasons I'm going to explain later. I give you the chance of doing three to five sets to control fatigue. You're going to do six to 12 reps for the heel elevated squats or eight to 15 reps for the hack squats. So this is going to trash your quads. This is the point. We want your legs to be big. That is sort of the reason why we have to do free weights. Then you're going to supersede that with neck extensions, three to five sets of 10 to 20. Likewise, I find that Kessnix athletes tend to have smaller necks on average. It's not a good look in my opinion. So isolating the neck, supersetting that with the knee flexion is a good idea. After that, we have you do weighted chin-ups. So a very important movement, a calisthenics movement that is S tier as well. I only took the cream of the crops. We only selected the best movements for hypertrophy. Three to five sets of four to 10 reps. So you experience very high intensity, but not so low that we end up doing a two or three rep max, okay? Four reps is the bottom of the barrel. It's the least amount of reps you will be able and allowed to do with the weighted chin-ups. Weighted chin-ups means whatever challenges you, okay? If for you, weighted chin-up is with ankle weights that are five pounds, so be it, that's a weighted chin-up. My goal is to keep you between four to 10 reps, never higher, so that you can progress within that rep range and add the weight, progressively overload the weight added to the body. Then you're going to do the first ab isolation movement, hanging knee raises, three to five sets, as many reps as possible, or decline bench sit-ups, three to five sets of 12 to 20 reps. The first one will be just with body weight because it's a bit too low. The second one will be with plates. So you're going to hold onto plates and you're going to, again, stick within that rep range. The goal is to hypertrophy the abs, is to thicken them up, and that is how you thicken them up. It is absolutely necessary that you isolate your abs if you want to see maximum hypertrophic results. As far as variations for the movement, which is the movement of the day, the calisthenics movement of the day is the way the chin up, I've elected to put the one arm supinated lat pull down in the program. So this is not an iliac lat pull down. It's not the one with the cable. It's one with the machine where the handle is above you. You grab it like this and you go like this, which is excellent for the lats and the stretch of the upper back. As you will have noticed, this program hammers the upper back. This is the philosophy that I've implemented in my training, and I think that this is the way to go. This is why calisthenics athletes have massive upper backs. They train it all the time, so we want to do the same. The trick and the issue would be recovery. How do we actually hit the lower back, the upper back all the time? Well, first and foremost, we keep an eye on lower back fatigue because that could be a limiting factor. So we do something like an ill elevated squat to not 
tag the lower back too much and keep it fresh. And then we use variations and different angles to hit the upper back and I give you time to recover. That's exactly what this program does. So you finish that day with hyperextensions, if you want more lower back glutes and arm strings, or block pose. Some of you guys are going to find that those hack squats or those elevated squats do not tax your posterior chain enough. You still have juice, in which case you could do block pulls, which is going to greatly hypertrophy your upper traps, upper traps that tend to be neglected a bit by calisthenics. You could also, if you wanted, do leg curls, if you decide that you're tired and you don't want to do another compound movement. And then we superset that with seated calf raises, four sets of 10 to 20. Likewise, chicken legs run in the family when it comes to calisthenics, unless you train them. So we are making you train them. That was for the lower body. So as you come to see, I'm making you work really, really hard. Okay, this is not an easy program. I would say that this is an intermediate program for most people. If you're a novice, you will not be able to run it. If you are a novice, you could jump on my novice program or on my Baki and my program. This is for people who already have gotten a taste of both free weights and calisthenics, are somewhat adept at both, and want to use both in combination to get massive. And talking about getting massive, we now move on to the other part of the program, the push-pull part of the program. That is going to be less strenuous, but still give you a good amount of work. You start the push <clears throat> with handstand push-ups or decline ring push-ups. So the decline ring push-ups, I have you do twice in the program because they're just that great. But also understand that since they're in a rotation, you might not do them for the Friday. The handstand push-ups, if you do them, you have to do them with a deficit. At no point is the top of your head the limiting factor in this movement ever. The limiting factor should be the moment where your hands touches your upper chest. That is a proper handstand push-up. If you cannot do a handstand push-up, you can spam decline ring push-ups or select or elect rather to do the free weight variation for the day, which is an incline press with a barbell or dumbbells or an overhead press, three sets of six to 10. Overhead press is more shoulders, incline press is more chest and shoulders. It's more of an hybrid movement. So again, you have a ton of choice to progress on this program. Three sets of six to 10 for the incline press or overhead press or three to six sets of handstand or decline ring push-ups for the same reason. Calisthenics are easier to recover from. You're going to do them as many reps as possible. So for the most part, you will find that if you're really good at handstands and you can do a set of, let's say you're really, really good, 20, you might get 20, 18, 16, 14, 12. That's still a lot of weight, that's still a lot of results. I doubt that most of you guys will be able to hit those rep ranges. And you superset that with behind the back or cross body cable curls. So do you want more a brachialis development and forearm, in which case you're going to do the across the body curl, or do you want more strict bicep development, you're going to do the behind the back movement. Both of these are also detailed in the tier list that I made for you guys. So you have a lot of, of possibilities to train the arms directly. There's a lot of direct arm isolation in the, this program, and that's the point. If you're the type of person that gets huge pectorals and delts from calisthenic movements like push-ups or any types of pressing motions, you will find that you will be able to make up for it with the isolation. And therefore, you will not end up with a spider physique. If you find, however, that your arms grow just fine from the calisthenics and a minimum amount of isolation, by all means, do not fall for the opposite meme, which would be to have massive arms and a small torso. Then we move on to the secondary pressing motion for the day. So movements that are going to develop the chest and shoulders, which of course are emphasized on this program. It's an hybrid calisthenics program. So the goal is going to give you a good V taper with a tremendous upper back but also these round shoulders and that big chest. So we're going to have you do ring guillotine push-ups or flies push-ups. Guillotine push-ups is if you want more upper chest and shoulders, flies if you want more direct chest development. Four sets of 12 to 15, same logic here, you will be pre-fatigued from the previous movements. So I want you to stick with a rep range that you can progress in. You can weight both of these movements. Then you superset that with bodyweight triceps extension, which is a fairly decent long of the tricep movement for calisthenics only, four sets as many reps as possible, or rope extensions if you want something more isolation E that doesn't include the entire body or the necessity to actually stabilize the core. You can just do your rope extensions, there is no problem with that. They also work the longer of the tricep if you do them properly. Four sets of 15 to 20, you could do four sets of 12 to 15. Again, <clears throat> the rep ranges are just guidelines. And then we finish the day with more upper body isolation with the upright rows, which are a favorite of both Omni Man, 
all actual raises you pick, but we keep you between 12 to 15 reps. We don't want to go lower with these movements. We want to keep these shoulders safe. And then you superset that with supinated ring rows, three sets as many reps as possible, or dumbbell rows, three sets of 10 to 12. Up to you. You will find, of course, that the dumbbell rows would tax the upper back much more. Keeping in mind also that since you train upper back every single time you step into the gym, you're going to have to deal with the fact that you train the next day. On Saturday, you will train the upper back as well. So tell yourself, hey, do I have the recovery ability to do that? If you don't, do your ring rows instead, and you'll find that you will get a good recovery effect from these ring rows, a good stretch of blood in the upper back, etc., etc. So that was for the Friday push, which, as you might notice, is extremely focused on the musculature of the shoulders and chest. Then we move on to the Saturday pull, that is going to be the exact opposite, of course. We start you with Romanian deadlifts or stiff leg deadlifts. Again, up to you, which one do you like the best? They're both going to hammer your posterior chain. Four sets of 8 to 12 for the RDL, four sets of 6 to 10 for the stiff leg deadlifts, slightly more intensity for the stiff leg deadlifts. And again, just like with the knee flexions, we have to do neck flexions after that, so we isolate the neck with these heavy lower body movements. Now, you also come to understand that logically, since I'm having you hammer the posterior chain, this must mean that later on, there is going to be in the same line of logic, a movement that is going to destroy the quads without touching the posterior chain too much. And that's exactly what is going on. So the Wednesday lower and the Saturday pull mirror one another, but they have a different emphasis. This is the point. The point is that we have you do three to five or four heavy sets of lower body movements, and we want you to put all of your energy into that movement in particular, because this is what has to carry over for the rest of the week. This is your heavy work. And I know that uh, for some of you guys who are used to doing eight sets of squats a week or doing deadlifts three times a week, you could tell yourself, well, that's not enough. I guarantee you that with the amount of upper back work you have to do with this program, you will be very happy to not have to do that many squats and deadlifts because you will not be able to recover from them anyways. And the few quote-unquote sets we have you do are enough because they are extremely intense. So after this posture chain destruction on Saturday, we have to do weighted pull-ups. So you do weighted chin-ups and weighted pull-ups. You could do weighted neutral ups with the neutral grip if you wanted. Not my problem. What I want you to do is you hang from that bar and you pull your body up. That is one of the best developer of the lats and of the upper back in general. Four sets, if you want, you could do three sets of six to 10. Again, high intensity, but also high volume. And you superset that with ab isolation. You want good abs, you want a six pack, getting lean is not going to cut it. What you need is to destroy your abs. They need to stretch, they need to contract so that they can grow. So the leg raises are going to take care of that. Or GHR sit-ups, whichever you like best. Through the four sets, as many reps as possible for the leg raises. 8 to 15 uh, reps for the GHR sit-ups. That is the point. And you'll find that it won't take away from your ability to do pull-ups. If anything, you will fill your core more and you'll be more stable. The free weight variation for the weighted pull-ups for this week is the close grip neutral lat pull-down. Keep in mind that to me, these are inferior to pull-ups. I think that the stretch of the pull-up is unmatched and the machine cannot replicate it. And then, as I promised, you still have a movement to do for the quads for that day that are still going to be extremely hard, but they're going to focus their difficulty on the quad, the quadriceps muscle in particular, and not the posterior chain. So either do split squats, or CC squats, four sets of 10 to 15, high volume, high set selection, so that we can hammer the quads. In total, you still get nine sets of pure quad isolation for the week. That is enough to grow massive quads. And it is the same for the posterior chain. You still get a total of eight hard movements for the arm strength, for the lower back, and for the glutes. And that is plenty. And in the same logic as with the Wednesday lower, where you could do hyperextension, block pulls, or leg curls here, if you wanted something more chill, quote unquote, because you're too tired, you could do leg extensions, four sets of 10 to 20. They still work the quads. And then we finish the week with standing calf phrases, four sets of 12 to 20. And that is going to be it for this hybrid calisthenics program. So Again, thank you for your patience for this program. It is, of course, available for free in the description. As I explained, a lot of rotational variation. It's up to you to decide which one you want to do for which day. I only recommend keeping the structure and keeping the exercise selection. As I said, Paul Omniman and I elected to take these exercises in particular because we believe that they are the best calisthenics movements paired with the best 
free weights movements that should give you the maximum amount of results possible to get as aesthetic as possible. And I'm going to leave you with that. I have a lot of cool things cooking that I've been preparing while I was sick for you guys, so you can expect to see my face again very soon. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.